，那是金刚打呐。哦，所以是打呐。Which kidney do you take? The left one or the right one? Right. I think I'll be looking forward to my new graphics card real soon. Wow. Hey, someone sent you a GPU? Eh? Gun fire? Huh, baby? So, I'm pretty sure you guys noticed the very lack of Shah in the studio tonight. That's because we needed a kidney, so he's lying down in the hospital right now. What? How do you expect me to afford all this stuff? I'm a bangsawan, not Jolo, okay? We spend most of our lives on the internet. We watch movies, we listen to music, and we play games. The internet is a space for us to be free and do whatever we like, so it should never be restricted. In fact, it's thanks to DG that you're watching this video right now. DG gives you the freedom to internet your way any day. More details in the description section below. Today, we'll be reviewing the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti Gaming OC with 11 gigabytes of GDDR6. 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 GDDR6 priced at 5,799 ringgit or 1,199 US dollars. More expensive than your mom's LV. More expensive than your dad's coat. Your dad got coach handbag, what la way? Well, that's a hell lot more expensive than the 1080 Ti when it first launched at under 4,000 ringgit. However, this RTX 2080 Ti is now packed full of new tech. We're talking about ray tracing, DLSS, NVIDIA scanner. So let's find out if this graphics card is worth you eating one full year of cup noodles over. <gasps> full year of cup noodles? In terms of aesthetics, Gigabyte is sticking to the neutral color scheme with the new RTX series. This time around, we're not seeing a white model with the RTX 2080 Ti Gaming OC, at launch anyways. It is 286.5mm long, 114mm wide, and 50.2mm thick, taking up 3 expansion slots, so make sure that you get a chassis that fits. It uses the Gigabyte proprietary WinForce 3X cooling system, this time with alternate spinning fans which Gigabyte claims to reduce turbulence in a 3 fan setup and increase airflow. Though the colors remain the same, the design of the shroud did undergo some minor changes. The illuminated Gigabyte logo on the side is still here with options for you to customize it between 16.7 million different colors with RGB fusion. At the back, they've added a simple black backplate with a Gigabyte logo printed in white. In terms of connectivity, the RTX 2080 Ti Gaming OC uses dual 8-pin for PCIe power delivery. For the I.O., we have three DisplayPort 1.4, a single HDMI 2.0, and a USB Type-C. Now let's take a look at the specs. In comparison to the Pascal 1080 Ti, the Turing 2080 Ti has a 12 nanometer process and not 16. 55% more transistors at 18.6 billion, a much larger die size at 754 millimeter square. In terms of CUDA cores, we have 21% more at 4,352. In terms of base clock, it's 9% slower, and boost clock is 2% slower. In terms of shaders, we have 21% more at 4,352. In terms of gear flops, we have 19% more at 13,448. So what's new? We have the 576 tensor cores and 68 RT cores, which the 1080 Ti does not have. In terms of memory, the memory size and bus remains identical. However, the memory type has been upgraded from GDDR5X to GDDR6. In terms of memory speed, we have 14 gigabits per second and not 11 gigabits per second on the 1080 Ti. Memory bandwidth is now 616 gigabytes per second and not 484. In terms of ROPs, we have 96 instead of 88, which is a 9% increment. In terms of texture units, we have 288 and not 224, which is a 29% increment. L2 cache is where it gets really interesting. We have more than double the amount of L2 cache at 6 megabytes and not 2.75 megabytes on the 1080 Ti. For the power connector, we now have a dual 8-pin PCIe power delivery and not an 8-pin plus 6-pin on the 1080 Ti. However, the TDP remains the same at 250 watts. We're gonna leave the specs for the RTX 2080 as well as the GTX 1080 side by side for you guys to take a look. If you're interested in that, press pause. 
As far as the new features are concerned, we spoke about them briefly during our RTX 2080 review. However, we're gonna do a separate video regarding all these new features once we get to do more real world tests with them. In summary, ray tracing is a tech that will make games look more realistic because of its capability to render much more complex 3D environments in reaction to lighting. What's impressive about RTX is that they can now do it in real time. DLSS or deep learning subsampling uses AI to accelerate and enhance graphics. Finally, Nvidia Scanner is a one button solution to GPU overclocking. Next, Let's talk about our test bench. We have an i7-8700K running at 5.0 GHz on a MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon with 32 GB of Team Nighthawk DDR4 memory running at 3200 MHz and a 512 GB Samsung 960 Pro M.2 NVMe SSD. We are also using a Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240L AIO cooler and a 1250 Watt Thermotech Tough Power RGB Plus PSU rated at 80 plus titanium. Moving on to the benchmarks. That's all we have in terms of numbers, let's look at the pros and cons with this RTX 2080 Ti. In terms of pros, firstly, this is now the fastest GPU on the block, with up to 36% better performance in synthetic benchmarks than the 1080 Ti, and 21% faster than the Titan XP, which is in its own league altogether. And in terms of games, it's 34% faster than the 1080 Ti and 27% faster than the Titan XP. Now this is a bona fide 4K capable GPU with more than 60 frames per second for most games, triple A titles, except for the Shadow of Tomb Raider at the highest setting because Lara Croft was feeling a little bit grouchy. In terms of power consumption, although it has the identical TDP as the 1080 Ti, we see a 7% less power consumption in idle and 3% less in load. So that's pretty surprising. Now with the maybes. Firstly, real-time ray tracing is really impressive and it's supposed to give us more realistic graphics. We just don't know much about it right now in terms of the performance hit that it will take on games. It might be a lot, it might be a little, we don't know. So that's a maybe. Secondly, DLSS is what a lot of people are excited about. Based on our Final Fantasy 15 benchmark, it seems that it does take a smaller performance hit to give you the same amount of image quality compared to just TAA alone. So let's hope that it works like that with all games. Finally, let's talk about the cons. And yes, some people might say that this is a con because this is very expensive and it seemed like a con, but it's not. The thing is, it's more expensive than a 1080 Ti, I get that. However, we do get a lot more technology packed into this card. I know they say that all the time, but this time it's true. It's just that um, as of now, there just isn't enough titles out there for us to play the games with real time ray tracing and DLSS to justify the cost. However, if you're someone like me, who just wants the best, the best, the baddest, bad, bad, we just want the biggest, baddest, and the greatest toy on the market. This is something that you should pick up because there's nothing to top it up already, and you can be cancelled like me. We together, together, cancel together, okay?
Specific to this card, the idle temperature seems a little high and that's because the fans by default only kicked in after about 54-55 degrees. If you want to change that, just tweak the fan settings and you're set. What's commendable about this card is that even though the thermal design seems to be a little smaller than their usual Aorus setup, it did maintain about 70 degrees during load for more than 15 minutes during stress tests and that's pretty good. Now this is the top model in Gigabyte lineup as of now with a lower end model called the wind force right below it however we believe that they are coming up with a much beefier model branded under Aorus and if you want to spend more than 5,799 ringgit on this RTX 2080 Ti gaming OC feel free to wait and check that out instead that's all folks, if you thought this video was awesome, please give us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below to let us know what you think about the RTX series. Let us know if you think it's worth it, it's not worth it, will you buy 10, will you sell your kidney? Just let us know everything you think about the RTX series and we'll see you in the next one. Jolo, Jolo, how low can you go? How low can you go? How low can you go?